been major uh, observatories which work, uh, which provide us with information over a very wide range of uh, wavelengths. Uh, thanks to this observation, we um, have uh, uh, increased, we have grasped uh, insights on the uh, uh, buildup of stellar mass over about more than 90% of cosmic time. And we also have uh, started to better understand the, uh, how efficiently uh, baryonic mass is converted into stars compared to the uh, uh, hierarchical growth of the dark matter halos. Uh, we know, for example, that, that uh, this is usually um, expressed with the stellar to halo mass ratio. Uh, we know that at uh, intermediate and low redshift, there is a dependence of the star, star formation efficiency on stellar mass due to the different uh, feedback mechanism. Uh, but we still do not know if there is also a dependence on time. Uh, there are very uh, different results, whether there is a quite strong evolution or a very mild and gentle evolution of the uh, uh, stellar to halo mass ratio. One way of measuring this is through abundance matching, which, however, required the observation of uh, stellar mass function. And measuring stellar mass function at high redshift is challenging. Uh, uh, one common way of doing it is uh, through uh, stellar mass to rest frame UV light ratios. But this is, uh, introduces uh, uh, problems because the rest frame UV is very sensitive to dust attenuation, which we don't know very well at high redshift, and to, um, um, uh, to uh, evolve uh, uh, stellar populations so that we end up with the galaxies of a given stellar mass, which show characterized by a quite wide range of uh, rest frame UV luminosity. Another important factor that we need to take into account are uh, nebular emission. A growing number of, uh, uh, of studies uh, uh, have shown, are showing that galaxies at high redshift are characterized by extreme emission lines, very, very high emission lines, very high equivalent with emission lines. And this can uh, uh, bias our estimates of stellar mass, so stellar mass function, but also these were, for example, at the origin of the uh, flattened evolution of the specific star formation rate that was observed in the past and which gave more than one headache, I think, to uh, theorists. So an alternative approach could be to measure the luminosity function in some uh, uh, specific band uh, uh, sensitive to stellar mass. And we, for, and we uh, in our uh, studies, we consider the rest frame Z band. This is free from strong nebular emission. Uh, it is red enough so that it traces the uh, evolved stellar population. So we have uh, emission from uh, the stars that uh, co constitute most of stellar mass. And thanks to uh, quite deep uh, uh, IRAC data, we can trace the Z rest frame Z band to redshift as high as potentially eight. But unfortunately, unfortunately we, we only get to seven due to uh, sensitivity. So we uh, me measure the evolution of the uh, rest frame UV, uh, sorry, rest frame Z band uh, luminosity function between redshift four and seven. And our results are, sure, are shown here. So uh, I, would, I would like to point out this thing. So the, the uh, solid uh, uh, blue curve here represents the Schachter fit to the uh, ratio for uh, luminosity function. Uh, these dashed, uh, color dashed uh, curves are not Schachter fit to the ratio 5, 6, and 7 luminosity function, but are just the evolution of the ratio 4 uh, luminosity function to ratio 5, 6, and 7 using the relative um, uh, evolution of the halo mass function. Mm -hmm. So we see that the, uh, uh, the, 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 the evolution of the uh, luminosity function is basically driven by the evolution of the halo mass function. And we can find some more quantitative way of, of, uh, of looking at this. We compute, um, so we transform the uh, uh, rest frame uh, optical light into stellar mass via stacking and 
uh, we obtain uh, here the stellar to halo mass ratio uh, over the uh, Rashid range four to seven, and we see that this does basically does not depend on on, on ratio. So uh, the stellar to halo mass ratio represents some kind of integrated uh, measurement of the efficiency of star formation, but we can also look at the evolution of the specific star formation rate, uh, which gives us the uh, instantaneous, sort of instantaneous uh, efficiency. And also in this case, we have uh, different uh, uh, results. Uh, we don't, so far we don't know if the, uh, uh, if the evolution follows the simple, I would say, evolution of the dark matter halo, or it is uh, shallower. Uh, to probe this, we uh, leveraged uh, very deep, the deepest uh, IRAC data available right now over the goods fields from the GRADES program, goods uh, reionization re era, wide area treasury from Spitzer, uh, led by Ivo Labbe. Uh, and we built uh, stacked SEDs shown here over in uh, four uh, different uh, luminosity bins. And uh, uh, so the, the, these SED are characterized by two main uh, properties. One is that they have very red uh, IRAC 3.6 minus 4.5 color. And the second is that they have blue uh, H minus 3.6 color. Let's see more in detail what this means. So. Uh, the, at redshift 8, the uh, O3 and H beta enter the 4.5 band micron band. So a very red 3.6 minus 4.5 uh, means that uh, we likely have a very strong emission line, extreme emission line from O3 and H beta. And this, trans, uh, uh, and this means also very high star formation rate. On the other side, at uh, redshift 8, the H band uh, uh, lies at about uh, 1,800 angstrom rest frame, and the 3.6 is about 4,000 angstrom rest frame. So the H minus 3.6 is our sort of best measurement of the Balmer breaker, the redshift 8. So a blue H minus 3.6 means very young ages, not a Balmer break, but a Balmer jump, actually. Uh, and this makes it makes a measurement of the uh, stellar ages quite uh, difficult, which also uh, uh, tra uh, translates into uh, large uncertainties in stellar mass measurement. The, we can have some help from uh, a nebular emission, but uh, the results basically end up to be strongly dependent on the model. So we have strong systematics in models about ages and stellar mass. And putting, this, putting everything together, we end up with the, uh, our so far, uh, lower limits on the uh, specific, specific star formation rate evolution. Uh, and uh, we can see that uh, we are still, co we are uh, consistent with uh, a pure evolution which follows the evolution of the uh, specific halo mass accretion rates. Mm -hmm. So at high redshift, the uh, star formation efficiency basically follows the uh, uh, hierarchical growth. Uh, my last uh, point, <clears throat> so the, um, uh, the faint end slope uh, of the UV luminosity function uh, 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 brings information about the uh, star formation efficiency as well, because from models we know that there should be some uh, turnover of the UV luminosity function, but even combining all blank fields uh, from the deepest HST data, we have not yet been able to uh, measure any, uh, um, to identify any uh, uh, turnover or turn, turn up of the luminosity function. So uh, what people are trying to do now is to uh, use the um, uh, magnification uh, power from the uh, Hubble Frontier Field uh, program so that we can get uh, deeper by about one, two magnitude and uh, analyze this uh, and construct luminosity function from based on this data. But uh, uh, when we deal with uh, uh, um, magnification, when we deal with a uh, uh, cluster, uh, we have to take into account many more um, parameters than field uh, luminosity function. Uh, 
uh, here I will uh, point out two of them. One is that uh, the uh, magnification factor for the high in the uh, region of the highest magnification, the mod, sorry, the magnification factor from models in the highest magnification regions uh, differ quite uh, uh, dramatically from one, one, in, one from each other. So that this can introduce strong systematics and this uh, is very uh, dangerous when we try to uh, recover the intrinsic luminosity function because uh, systematics can hide uh, turnover, for example, in the luminosity function. Here, it's just an example. So two in different input luminosity function uh, with different assumption on the magnification uh, map uh, end up with a luminosity function with a, a, a faint end slope of minus two in both cases. Mm -hmm. The second important thing is that uh, a number of works have now shown that uh, the faintest galaxies at high redshift show, uh, are characterized by very small sizes, extremely small sizes, which are consistent with the sizes of superstar clusters. Mm -hmm. This has uh, important uh, uh, implication at the time of, uh, uh, of measuring the completeness of our sample, because different completeness Different sizes assumption means different completeness factors and different faint end slope of the luminosity function. So this is uh, a work done by Richard, basically. And uh, uh, so he uh, uh, implemented his uh, forward model, the uh, uh, luminosity function uh, estimates. Uh, and this is preliminary result. So uh, he's measuring uh, luminosity function from redshift uh, about 2 to, to about uh, 10. And we can see uh, that the luminosity function doesn't show any uh, turnover uh, down to about uh, absolute UV magnitude of about minus 14 to minus 15 as we go to uh, higher redshift, redshift 9 and redshift 10. So uh, the very good news is that, is that this luminosity function done, uh, measured uh, using the full uh, uh, data set from the Hubble Frontier Field, so cluster and field uh, data, are cons totally consistent with the uh, uh, field-only luminosity function. And when we look at the, uh, so these are the, the, the new measurements. So when we look at the, where they fall on the uh, uh, star formation rate density, plane versus redshift, we see that uh, the star formation rate density basically follows the growth of the, uh, uh, of the halo mass function, uh, at least over this uh, ratio between 3 and, and, and 10. And uh, these are my conclusion, and I'll take questions. Thank you. Uh, you mean from the lumin luminosity function? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the re main reason is that I think that it's because the evolution of this luminosity function uh, is uh, uh, marginally, but it's better described by an evolution in uh, luminosity rather than in number density. Uh, usually, the, for, for the UV luminosity function at high redshift, the evolution is mostly in the normalization factor. So, uh, while here it's in uh, luminosity, and luminosity correlates better in. Uh, uh, and correlates better with stellar mass. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but for example, uh, the um, uh, the specific star formation rate measurements those refer to the much lower mass than 
the uh, UV, then the optical luminosity function. And in that case, the specific star formation rate evolution is consistent with the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. E yes. Uh, so uh, turns out that uh, so if we assume, um, I'm sorry. So which are in the implication the implication of the uncertainties in the faint end slope of the uh, rest frame UV luminosity function? Uh, turns out that. Uh, 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 within uncertainties, there are enough photons to ionize. Uh, after, uh, so assuming an escape fraction of about 10%, which I think it's a bit, it's uh, still uh, reasonable, but a bit on the higher end. And considering also that the C ion uh, at higher redshift is higher because of the strong, uh, uh, stronger emission lines. I had a. Um, looks like Mario again. <laughs>